If you like these videos and you want to see them a day before they go up on YouTube, head over to library. There's a link in the description. It's a pretty awesome open source alternative to YouTube. I really love it and I'm posting all my videos there first. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite creator who needs the stupid smacked out of him, Gardner. Got some beard going on here. I got some itchy beard, itchy beard syndrome. So I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, Brian Lunduk, Matt Hartley, Chris Titus Tech, and myself all get together on uh, just about every Saturday night at around midnight Eastern Standard Time, and we just have a live stream. We just hang out with the with with the chat room. We take questions from the chat. Um, last night, for some reason, the caliber of the questions could have been more awesome, so I came up with one, and it's something I've been thinking about for a little while. The question is: Is Linux more fun? on weird hardware it wasn't designed for. Now don't get me wrong, I have multiple System76 machines. I, I love System76. They're one of the coolest group of people I've ever met in my entire life. And their machines are designed specifically for Linux. That's awesome. I have drooled over System76's uh, system configuration utility on their website uh, for as long as I can remember, as long as I've been aware of them. And, uh, they're awesome. And the same goes for Purism. Purism makes great laptops and they make uh, the Librem 5, which I'm still super stoked about and I can't wait to get the final product in my hands. So just know that I'm a fan of all these companies, you know, the, the guys behind Pinephone, the Pinebook, all the, all the system manufacturers out there who make Linux hardware, I'm a fan of them. It's cool that they're doing that. So nothing that I'm saying in this video is meant to diminish them in any way. But <laughs> I remember a time uh, just a few short years ago when uh, I had a hard time using Linux and that was kind of the fun of it. And granted, I've been using Linux for over 10 years at this point, so perhaps my early frustrations were learning experiences and I'm at a different place. But I don't think so, because I've had a couple experiences recently that have really kind of uh, shown a light on what I really love about Linux. Let's talk about this. This is not the first laptop that I ever put Linux on, but it is one of the, the machines that I had the most fun with Linux on. Uh, it's an HP Pavilion D67 or something like that. And uh, it weighs about 10 pounds. <laughs> and uh, Nothing worked on it when I first got the machine. Um, at that time, System76 was a company and they were making some awesome hardware, but uh, I had a budget of about $450 and uh, that was the machine that I found. I was able to find it on Newegg's uh, refurbished section. Uh, it had a, uh, it had like eight gigabytes of RAM. No, it didn't have eight. It had probably four gigabytes of RAM. I haven't turned that thing on in 10 years. And it has an AMD A10 uh, CPU with integrated Intel HD graphics. Uh, that thing was actually pretty good for the time. I was able to play through Bioshock Infinite on Windows on that machine. Um, and like that was when Bioshock Infinite was new. So, I mean, it, it was a capable laptop, but nothing worked on it on Linux. Absolutely nothing. Not only did it have Broadcom Wi-Fi, which was not supported without proprietary kernel modules, uh, but it also had Beats Audio. Beats Audio. Look, it's this is like really dirty. It's been in storage for years. And I was packing up. Look, Beats Audio. This machine has a subwoofer right there. And uh, the subwoofer just did not work. So all you got was tinny audio out of here. The fingerprint scanner didn't work. For some reason, uh, you couldn't increase the resolution to native screen resolution unless you had FGLRX installed. FGLRX, do you guys remember that? Yet, despite the fact that none of the hardware seemed to work out of the box, uh, I look back on those moments where I spent countless hours Googling to try and get this thing into working order as decidedly happy moments. Um, and yeah, I was, I was frustrated. Uh, when stuff didn't seem to work, uh, but I really enjoyed it. I still had a lot of fun, and I learned a hell of a lot. Just trying to figure out how to optimize this thing with uh, the the proprietary AMD drivers, Fire GL graphics, even getting the Broadcom Wi-Fi uh, drivers to work 
uh, finding the right one for my chipset. That was a learning experience. I learned so much about Linux and how to to, to dig into system configuration files and blacklist uh, kernel modules or upgrade the kernel completely in Ubuntu. I mean, I learned so much and it shaped who I am today as a Linux user because of the problems that I had with that HP laptop. But I think more importantly than the things that I learned is that I had fun. Truly, I had fun screwing around with that laptop. So the reason I bring all this up is because, uh, you know, I've been uh, messing around with some exotic hardware. What does that mean? Well, it, it's hardware that doesn't necessarily work on, on Linux out of the box. So a few weeks back, I had the opportunity to purchase a, a really, really inexpensive Lenovo yoga book, uh, C960, I believe. This is an ARM laptop. And uh, you know what? Messing around with it? kind of brought back memories of messing around with that little laptop, that HP pavilion that I had uh, so many years ago. The fact of the matter is, I had fun. And I was messing around with this ARM laptop. I had to download a special build of Ubuntu just to get it to work. Uh, there was no build for Manjaro <laughs> to get it to work. Uh, and I got everything to work except for the Wi-Fi. And it kind of it kind of got me thinking like, hmm, I wonder what else I could find to put Linux on and, and maybe have a little fun. So I found this old MacBook uh, and I was able to slap Manjaro on it and uh, it worked like absolute crap. It was very old. It's a, I think it's a Intel Core 2 or maybe an, it must be like an early i5 or something. It's, it's really old, but suffice it to say, I had fun doing it. The only, the only problem with the MacBook of course is the terrible keyboard. I hate MacBook keyboards. They're the worst. Not so much the actual feedback of it, but the the uh, the function and control keys and all that stuff. Can't stand it. But then I picked up this. Oh, my password didn't work. This is a uh, Surface Book. Now, some people are going to call me a heretic. I was able to get this secondhand for about 150 bucks. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have to say that this is perhaps some of the most uh, elegant non-Apple product uh, engineering that I have ever seen in my life. I think this thing is absolutely beautiful. Um, but everything works on here except for the touch screen. And that, I know why it's not working because the kernel module is incompatible with the latest kernel that I'm running on here. But even, even the freaking, uh, even, even the pen works. That's pretty awesome. You can actually like, it can tell the difference between the, the front and the back. It's really cool, okay? And I had fun. That's the thing. That's what's most important, is that I found that to be incredibly fun. I had flashbacks to when I was configuring the Pavilion laptop, and it was great. I got to go on GitHub and find uh, this guy, DM Hacker, who made a script that just helps you get all of the stuff configured uh, in the kernel for the Surface Book. And <laughs> it was a blast. It was an absolute blast. Almost nothing worked when I first installed Manjaro. I mean, the Wi-Fi worked. Couldn't use the touchscreen. Couldn't use the, uh, the pen. The only things that aren't working on it now is the touchscreen and the camera. But I can fix that. The thing that I like most about this machine is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. If more laptops had that, uh, that would be a good thing, I think. 16 by 10 is obviously superior to 16 by 9. <laughs> so anyway, there'll be a link down below to uh, DM Hacker's uh, repository. There's scripts that'll get you started if you have a Surface uh, Surface Book. It actually works on uh, most Surface products, not just the Surface Books. And uh, that's really, really, really cool to me. Uh, and installing Linux on there was actually really straightforward. You just hold down the volume button and then turn the power on and it takes you into the thing and you can just enable third party uh, secure boot certificates. There you go. You're ready to go, boy. So the question is, why did I have so much fun? Is it that Linux is just more fun on hardware that it's not meant to be used on? Is that what it is? I don't know. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on this. Let me know down in the comments. 
And again, I'm not knocking System76 or any other hardware manufacturer out there. Uh, they do great work. They are great people. And if you can afford uh, to pick up one of their machines, do it. And this isn't like a sponsored bit. Like they're not sponsoring this. Why would they sponsor a video where I talk about other manufacturers' hardware? But the question remains, I mean, we're not just talking about laptops. Like when I built Dargo here, my editing PC, it's got a Ryzen desktop processor. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM. It had... Uh, at the time, it had a GTX 970 in it. Now it's got a Vega 64. And when I put that thing together, I had literally zero issues installing Linux, getting it set up, getting it working. Everything just worked easily. And I just got to work. I just started doing my channel with it. I mean, I guess that's the thing. Is like When I first started using Linux, I wasn't like a system administrator. It wasn't my job. I wasn't a programmer. I worked at Home Depot. <laughs> I was, a, I was a merchandiser. I went to work at like 4 o'clock in the morning, got home at 1, and then played around on my computer. I was just a passionate and enthusiastic fan of open source. And maybe that's where all of this joy comes from, is remembering back then at a, at a more interesting time, more, more innocent time. Because you know what? Now I'm the system administrator for two different companies. I manage two different Linux servers and... I manage my own home server and all the other PCs that I have. I have so many PCs, you guys. So maybe it's just a more innocent time and it's just nostalgia. I, d I don't know. But personally, I think that I've always just kind of liked using Linux the hard way. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thank you for being here. I truly appreciate your guys' uh, continued viewership. Um, I wanna thank everybody over on Patreon. We have 105 amazing people over there, including Mitchell Valentino, one of my top tier Singularity members, uh, without whom these guys, if, if they weren't around, I wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, so I just wanna say thanks to everybody over there. And if you like what I do here, consider heading over to Patreon and, and tossing me a few bucks. I really appreciate it. It makes a world of difference. All right, well, that's it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about uh, the, the, the video today. I'm out of words. Also, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube, or if you're on uh, library, uh, the follow and sh uh, repost, that's the button over there. Head over to library, it's pretty awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys later.